Sports. We are Baltimore. We are St. Louis. The Cardinals and their fan base turn the page on opening day and now look ahead to game number two. Lance Lynn, the big righty, gets the start. St. Louis, Cincinnati, game two, next. It is a beautiful night for baseball here in the Gateway City. And this evening, game two of a three-game series between the St. Louis Cardinals and the Cincinnati Reds. Jim Hayes is with us. That's the mad Hungarian Al Rabowski. I'm Dan McLaughlin, and welcome to Cardinals baseball on your home of the Cardinals all season long, Fox Sports Midwest. Well, Al, when you think about yesterday, you throw it out the window. Now you look ahead to tonight. And uh, we saw that bullpen. They were used an awful lot. Three big names out there. So you wonder how that will affect uh, the ball game this evening. But first and foremost, you don't have to worry about it if Lance Lynn can go deep tonight. And Lance Lynn, a year ago, his first year in the league, he was an 18-game winners. That was high in the club. He was a National League All-Star because he got off to a great start. He struggled in his first start in Arizona, so he'd like to atone for that. Lance Lynn, a live look at him, warming up in the bullpen. Bronson Arroyo going for Cincinnati tonight. The bullpen yesterday, what does it mean for game two? Find out next. For baseball it wasn't funny though yesterday in the ninth for the st louis cardinals the relievers allowed 10 runs 
nine and the ninth. A one-run lead turned into a 13-4 debacle. And in that game, pitches thrown by Rosenthal, Boggs, and Zabchinski, an awful lot. And that could be a factor for this ball game tonight. Mike Matheny, the Cards manager, says that everyone's available. We may see that guy even close. That's Fernando Salas. Remember, he had 24 saves back in 2011. Day yesterday afternoon. Before we jump ahead to game number two, let's take you back to yesterday's festivities.
year ago, but the 2012 season was full of memorable moments. With the first five of our top ten most memorable moments of 2012, let's send it over to Pat Paris. The defending champion St. Louis Cardinals began the 2012 season in Miami. The New Look Marlins were the talk of the offseason, but the Cardinals spoiled the grand opening of Miami's new ballpark thanks to seven and a third innings of two-hit baseball by Kyle Loesch. Rookie manager Mike Matheny had his first win, 4-1. to one. The Cardinals were without Chris Carpenter to start the season, but it was another Carpenter who made a name for himself in the season's first series with the Cubs. Matt went four for four with a triple and a home run. The rookie would prove useful for the rest of the season. The Cardinals knew they couldn't replace Albert, but they sure came close. Carlos Beltran, while enjoying a comeback year with the Cardinals, drove in all six of the team's runs during a game in Arizona. Beltran would finish the year with more home runs and better on base percentage than Albert Pujols. Adam Wainwright's road to recovery following his Tommy John surgery wasn't easy, but all the hard work paid off when Adam tossed a complete game four-hit shutout against the Padres on May 22nd. His first shutout in a year and a half, an emotional Wainwright said after the game it might be the best feeling he's ever had as a pitcher. Carlos Beltran broke into the big leagues with the Royals. He hit his first home run as a Royal and stole his first base as a Royal. But on June 15th, he became the first switch hitter in baseball history with 300 home runs and 300 stolen bases, and he did it against the Royals. Thank you, Pat. Before tomorrow afternoon's game, we'll look at the second part of the most memorable moments of 2012. We have baseball. Comes your way next. Brought to you by Budweiser, the official beer of Major League Baseball. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. See your Mid-America Chevy dealer or log on to SDLChevy.com. Dobbs Tired Auto Centers, number one for quality tires and expert auto service. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. And by Steak and Shake, just no equal. Lance Lynn walking in for the bullpen moments ago. Nice crowd on hand. Perfect weather tonight for game number two against Dusty Baker's Cincinnati Reds. Let's take a look at their lineup. Shin Su Chu. He was all over the place. Good and bad in game one. Then it's Cozart, Votto, Phillips, Bruce, Frazier. Robinson gets a start. 
He'll be in left. Ryan Hannigan behind the plate, and the pitcher is Bronson Arroyo. Defense presented by Dobbs. We highlight John Jay. No errors in 115 games last year. Matt Carpenter. The change for the Cardinals over third is David Freeze will come off the bench tonight. The first pitch swung on, and we're underway here at Bush Stadium, and Lance Lynn, the big righty, getting the start tonight. Well, Lance, an 18-game winner a year ago, making his second start. He only pitched four innings in the desert, and his pitch count was very high. So good to see him come here and fire strikes and control the count. I talked with Lance about that start and the lack of control that he had. And he said he had no real feel for the baseball when it was in his hands. It always felt slick. And not to make excuses, but you go from spring training, the wet conditions at times of Florida, the humidity, and then you go to that dry air of Arizona. And he said it was a factor. Really struggled just getting a grip on the baseball. And now you being a former pitcher can understand that and how it affect what you're trying to do out there on the mound. Or well, it is troublesome when you really don't have a feel. And sometimes you just have to rub up the baseballs a little more. Do whatever you can to kind of feel and at least convince yourself mentally that you're prepared. The 2 2. Chu hits it out of play. He had three home runs in the first five games. So he's had a little pop out of that leadoff spot. But they really acquired him because of his high on base percentage. The 2 2 pitch again. Spoiled by Chu. Well, for Lance Lynn, last year was so up and down. He was an all star. All toll, he was an 18 game winner. But at one point, second half of the season, found himself pitching out of the bullpen. And then back into the rotation late because of things like that. A strikeout to start the game. So four parts of his season as we take a look at what happened in 2012. It's our Toyota keys to the game concerning Lance Lynn. Well, those first 13 starts got him a bid to the All-Star game. You see the last or the next 12. Actually the the next the last one he made was a start against Cincinnati and that sent him to the bullpen. And he just needed a little refresher. But going to the bullpen that's the first time he had been in the rotation. You play that extra month at the big league level and needed that little break. And when it came back the last four games of the year, he's throwing the ball very well again. Cozart down to third. The diving stop by Matt Carpenter. Carpenter has not disappointed at all in the start of this season, defensively, especially Al at third base. Well, that's his natural position. He made some spectacular plays in Arizona. Here he takes a, a double away. And we really, that fateful inning where we saw the run score last night, there was a ball that I think even David Freeze would say under normal conditions he catches. And that really kind of started the game. That ball went down in the corner for a double. And that really started the merry-go-round of all the runs being scored in the ninth inning. Here is Joey Votto, quiet day yesterday, and a quiet start to his season. But we know that will change as this year goes on. One of the great hitters right now in baseball. First seven games, no home runs. He already has 10 walks on the season. Always has that high on base percent. Votto was part of Team Canada World Baseball Classic. Do you remember Lance Lynn pitching that extreme from the first base side of the rubber? I do not. I think maybe that's one of the little changes he might have made. Trying to come into uh, doing his mechanics now that he's lost 40 pounds and he's more athletic. But you see him kind of a little bit side saddle there, but right on the extreme first base side of the rubber. And so far, it's so good. Two balls and two strikes on Votto. MVP of 2010. That year he had 324 with 37 homers. Last year his season was cut short because of a pair of knee surgeries. And he strikes out as Yachty holds on. Two strikeouts to start this ball game for Lance Lynn. No score after a half inning.
and Holiday. Then Craig Beltron drops down to the fifth spot in this lineup. Molina, Descalso, Cosma, and the pitcher Lance Lynn. Defensively, brought to you by Dobbs as Robinson gets that start in left. Chu is in center, Bruce in right. Frazier, Cozart, Phillips, and Votto along the infield. Votto also added a gold glove in 2011 to go along with that MVP of 2010. Hannigan is behind the plate. Always fun to watch. Even from the bullpen view that you see right there, Bronson Arroyo, this guy is a pitch maker. He really is. He doesn't throw particularly hard. He'll almost invent a release point when he's out there, do anything he can to help his own cause. He's gotten off to a good start this year, and he's a workhorse. He'll give you 200 innings every year and keep his team in the, his team in the game. And really over the last eight years, he's He's been a winner. John Jay, average at 242 with a homer at four RBIs. You think about Bronson Arroyo, you think about home runs allowed. He gives up a bunch, but end of the season, he's the perfect complement to a very good staff. That's off the end of the bat. Little squibber down to third. Frazier makes the play for the first out. And I bring that up, Al, because he gives you so many innings. Since 2006, no one in the National League has thrown more innings. And the effect that that can have over a long season on your bullpen is incredible. Well, that was one of the successes for the Cincinnati last year is they really put five starters out there and Dusty didn't have to change anything. They all were workhorses. They all took the ball every fifth day. And as you said, with all the innings logged, it, it was uh, less workload for the bullpen, and they were exceptional. Now it's Matt Carpenter. It was Descalso at second base for the opener yesterday, and then David Freeze getting that start down at third. David Freeze, one for 12 against Bronson Arroyo, so that might be the trying to ease Freeze back in the lineup. Carpenter slicing one down the left field line. This one is caught on the run. Nice play near the wall by Robinson. The young man, we saw him in yesterday's game pinch hit, but here he corrals that one in. Replay is brought to you by Plaza Tire Service. Back with us for another season. We appreciate that. Two down and in steps Matt Holiday. Like the fact to use two hands to secure that ball in his glove. Two outs and nobody on. That's it. Three home runs and batted over 300 against the Royal. But Mike Matthew is somewhat tested. To, we'd love to get Jaime Garcia in there against the Royal. Jaime's five for six with a home run. Bobby maybe Brunson maybe he's your top pinch hitter tonight. Maybe, Who knows? Maybe. Maybe. I always find it interesting and. During spring training, we talked to Whitey about it. Todd Worrell was at dinner with us, and sometimes you would see Todd Worrell, Cardinals closer at that time, put into a outfield spot. Then a lefty comes in, and all of a sudden, Todd Worrell is brought back into pitch. And he said, I, I don't understand why at times, sometimes you have guys like a Garcia that you know are good enough athletes to be hitters. Why not give them a shot here or there? Well, what, what happened was, Whitey Herzog would pay a lot of attention during band practice. And Todd Worrell was a power shagger. I mean, he loved the batting practice, and he'd race around the field. And Whitey knows that, hey, he's, one, he's a good athlete. Two, he shags the ball, gets good jumps on it, and he's not going to embarrass himself if you did that. You know, you bring in Daly to pitch, pitch to a tough uh, left-hander, batter, and then you put uh, Todd in the outfield, and then you turn around and, when Daly got the lefty out, then you bring in for the right-hander, Todd would close the game out. And in strategy, what a great way to use him. It was, it was a way, because I know, and Whitey's probably listening right here, but there are times when Whitey said, I'd have a hard time in the seventh or eighth inning if the game's on the line, not bringing in, you know, my, my best pitcher. 
So that was a way that he could get maximum usage out of uh, Todd Worrell when posers weren't just one inning pitchers. Gets him to reach, and Arroyo makes the play. Cardinals go one, two, three in the home half of the first. No score after one here at Bush Stadium. for the Rawlings Gold Glove as well as the Platinum Glove for being the best defensive player of the game. Yadier Molina, Gold and Platinum Glove Award that will be on Sunday presented by Rawlings. And fans will take home that replica as well. Glad you're with us on Fox Sports Midwest. Jim Hayes is with us. Al Roboski, Dan McLaughlin as we move to the second inning and there's no score. Brandon Phillips cleanup hitter off to a good start couple of home runs and seven RBIs the loss of Ludwig for at least the first half of the season has dropped Phillips down to the cleanup spot and really in his time in Cincinnati he's been a leadoff man he's hit second also has hit cleanup one of the best players in the game. Breaks his bat. Good pitch by Lance Lynn. Gobbled up at short by Cosmo. One away. Set up inside. Ball kind of runs right inside. Jams him a little bit. And a good pitch by Lance Lynn. He looks so much more comfortable. Last season, remember he got off his first 13 starts. He was 10 and 2 with an ERA about 240. And you never really worried about him because he just, you know, just a bulldog attitude. No matter what happened in the game, it just didn't change his personality. And you like to see ways out there now. The pitch taken for a ball. This is Jay Bruce. This is a very well put together Cincinnati club by Walt Jockety. And he has locked up some of these younger players like a Jay Bruce long term. And what we're seeing now, the trend in baseball is clearly not to let your best players, especially young players, have a chance to get to free agency. And, and yeah, maybe you overpay early on, but you take that chance. Cardinals have done that. John Mosellock has been fabulous at reading the marketplace. And of course, those two were hand in hand for so many years. Well, it's been proven just buying free agent team doesn't necessarily mean you win. And with the prices that are out there now, you have to build from within. General manager John Mosellock and John Booch is also with him in his box tonight. Booch running the minor leagues. Michael Gersh, the assistant GM. 
digging into a little dinner and some baseball tonight. That's Bolt Powell. Oh, Jim Hayes is going to have uh, hopefully an interview with John Mosellock about the third inning, and I guess that's going to be kind of a tough uh, topic. Jason Mott. Jason Mott. And get an update exactly where that stands, but right now we can tell you that Mott is shut down at least until May 1st, and there's the fastball. 93 on the gun from Lance Lynn. Good velocity tonight, and that is his third strikeout. Velocity is one thing, but I think the, the fact that he's finishing off these pitches, you know, in the game in Arizona, he was really falling off towards the first base side. Now you're seeing him drive a little bit better towards home plate, and then after the execution, he'll take a step towards first. I'm sure, that's something that Derek worked with. Lance in, in between starts, and sometimes to make little subtle changes, you can do it in the bullpen. Sometimes it takes you a couple starts to make those adjustments. Two outs and nobody on for Todd Frazier. The 0-1 pitch hits the outside corner, make it 0-2. Vic Carapaza is our home plate umpire, and I like his own tonight. That's ball away. A swing and a miss. Lance Land with four strikeouts to start the night. And you can join the millions of fans and subscribe right now. Watch every out of market game live online on your favorite mobile devices in HD quality. MLB.TV baseball is everywhere. Lost in the explosion by the Cincinnati Reds in that ninth inning. The fact was the Cardinals had a total of four hits for the game. Right. <laughs> So not just the bullpen yesterday. Cardinals received a tremendous start and outing from Jaime Garcia. But you really come to expect that when you think about Jaime pitching here at Bush Stadium as you get the numbers on Alan Craig. But it's also good news for Jaime because he pitched very well on the road. And that's something that he's struggled at doing. So now he's got two very good starts under his belt. Most importantly in his mind is he is healthy and he's pitch like. Here's a 1 1 pitch to Craig. Bronson Arroyo has been around so long he goes back to the first world championship in recent memory for the Boston Red Sox. They won two under Terry Francona, now the manager with the Cleveland Indians. Arroyo 
played a vital role on that team. Swing man out of their bullpen. Long relief. He worked in the, the setup role. And he's found a home with the Cincinnati Reds. Where he wanted to be a starter. I would have to say that Cincinnati got a very good deal. They got cash and a royal for Willie Moe Payne. Willie Moe. And a big league name, but not so much this, you know, a career. Big league body, too. Remember yes. that? Yeah. Big guy. And when he connected, I mean, he could launch it, but didn't quite connect enough. Alan Craig is one for five against Arroyo, but I would think that over a big sample, he would have pretty good success. And I say that because, you know, you just don't see him swing that much out of the strike zone. He really has pretty good balance there. He doesn't, uh, he's not fooled or batting off his front foot that often. So I think with his ability to wait back, I think he can do some damage. Eighth season now for Arroyo, who's also spent time in the NL Central with Pittsburgh. That's a pitch right there that Arroyo gets a lot of hitters to chase. He'll throw, drop down, throw from different angles, vary his leg kick, change speeds. Tommy, our director, tells us uh, the view you see there, live look out in right field. As Craig gets underneath it and a fly ball out to left. Robinson makes the catch. Here's one away. Three years ago, Bronson Royal gave up 46 home runs on the year. Last year, he cut it down to 26. Take a look here, Al, in talking with the Reds personnel. One way to combat, and you see what he's done the last two seasons. All the starts and the home runs allowed stand out, cutting it down by 20 that from the previous year. That pitch right there is what he's been really trying to incorporate more of against left handed hitters, which is the two seamer getting in on the lefties. Come back, come back uh, pitch that, you know, starts inside to a left handed batter, and then you kind of give up on it, and then it tails back to the strike zone. Nobody was better at that than Greg Maddox. The shift is on for Beltron. They've got Frazier at the shortstop position. And Cozart is still on the shortstop side a second, but behind the bag. One of his problem that I would think of too is he's had at times trouble getting in on left-handed batters. See that Beltron just trying to slap it the other way and beat that shift. They'll have the left fielder pretty well straight away. And there's just a huge gap out in left center. So if he can hit it to the opposite field. In his younger days, you'd have a triple for sure. And a ground ball hit to the right side. Reach for it. Broke his back. Phillips is there. Talk about somebody rolling over on a pitch. Well, it's the outside pitch. And you, instead of going with it, you try to pull that pitch and you roll over on it. And it's a simple ground ball. You see, it's outside and they just try to chop on it, but it's so far outside that it's just a simple ground ball out. Yadier Molina. Average at 250. Let's see if Mike Matheny tomorrow with the day game. Hopefully we get it in. Rain is in the forecast and then the off day on Sunday if Yadi would step aside and really kind of a, a two for one, give him a little break for that long season. Mike's talked about it. Arguably for him managing a bullpen just like for any manager, but also trying to figure out when to rest players. Very difficult to do. Waits on the pitch and lines out to Cozart at short. A 1 2 3 inning again for Brunson Arroyo. No score after two.
Sports Midwest is brought to you by Schnucks, your neighborhood hometown grocer. And come to Jack in the Box today. Try the new hot mess burger. It's loaded with spicy jalapenos, onion rings, and gooey pepper jack cheese. find out more on Jason Mott. Check in with the cat who's standing by with John Moselak. Hello, Jim. Hi, Dan. Uh, Jason Mott had an MRI on his pitching elbow earlier today, then got reevaluated by the Cardinals medical staff. Mo, what did they find? Well, basically what we've determined is is that he does have a ligament issue. Our, our hope is is that over the next three weeks he'll be able to begin a throwing program. If not, we've soft circled the May 1st as a point where we will put surgery on the table and there'll be something that we discuss. So, you know, historically we don't really get into those types of details, but we feel like given the timing of this, we don't want this to be one of those things that we talk about in an extended period of time where he's just not available. And in this case, the clock is ticking. So we're certainly aware that by the time we get to May, if he's not throwing, he will likely undergo Tommy John surgery. And for Jason in the interim until that May 1st deadline, is it just rest or is he doing any sort of rehab activity? Well, it'll be a combination of, of rehab and rest. Our fingers are crossed that he'll start being uh, feeling better and be asymptomatic, but time will tell. Jason has told me he's getting more range of motion. The pain has gone away. Are they optimistic that they can get by surgery and just have him rest? Any sense of that? Well, as you know, I mean, I always take that optimistic approach, but I also felt we had to be realistic of, of what are the potential outcomes of this. And so rather than, than just keep the uh, flowerly point of view, we just decided to, to lay it all out on the table. And more importantly, we put it in, in a time frame where if we have to make a decision by early part of May, we're prepared to. Thanks, Mo. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jim. Dan? Okay, good stuff. We appreciate it. And uh, certainly not the news that you want to hear. At least at this point, you would love to hear the news that it's progressing in the right direction. But uh, I think the thing, though, you have to remember, though, Al, even if, and this is Derek Robinson at the plate, he waves at it. What a start here by Lance Lynn. That's strikeout number five, only in the third. But uh, so many players now and pitchers have Tommy John surgery. It's not like you're talking about a career coming to a close. So over the course of the long haul, if that's the direction they go it's a bump in the road when you think about Jason Mott well he'll come back and he'll pitch and be successful you know there's no doubt about that but just tough to swallow when and I, I'd love to hear Jason's reaction because as Jim pointed out you know on the road trip and he was on the road trip to get you know therapy uh, he was feeling better slowly hit to the left side Carpenter Two away. Hannigan retired. Eight up, eight down for Lance Lynn, and it brings in the pitcher, Brunson Arroyo. Lance throwing the ball very well. He's cut really down. He's got 33 pitches here at this point. Uh, in his last game, he was about at in the 80s in his pitch mark. He only went four innings. We always talk about pace and how a pitcher goes about it is Arroyo digs in for the first time tonight. When you're feeling right and you can tell Lance Lynn is feeling good your pace picks up and the other day not having a good feel for the baseball maybe mechanics out of whack. Different looking guy here in his second start. Most definitely. It's very comfortable very focused determined to be ahead in the count. And that pitch right there has been effective. Very good pitch. Now, like Arroyo, you just can't take him for granted either because you know, he'll pop the ball out of the ballpark on you every now and then. There's a strikeout of Arroyo. First time through this lineup. Lance Lynn strikes out six. Plaza tire service replay as we had to break. No score midway through three.
the run to bring you the largest timed 5K race in St. Louis. Girls on the Run, nonprofit organization that helps prepare thousands of girls for a lifetime of healthy living. The race will be held on May 11th, downtown St. Louis. Register now at Girls on the Run, St. Louis.org. Al, I was a part of that race last year myself. Pat Paris, the oh, Fox Sports Midwest girls. I can only imagine. Did you let any of those girls catch you? Absolutely not. That away. You can't give in in this game, Al. No, nope, you got to go hard all the time. You show up, you give 110. You do it for your teammates. Felt good. My last bullpen. Any more cliches? That's about done. <laughs> do it for the love of sport. <laughs> well, let's get some scoring. <laughs> Here's Descalso, and the third baseman is playing in. That's Frazier, 7, 8, and 9 for St. Louis here in the bottom of the third. I have to ask Dusty, as you talked about Frazier playing in, the third baseman. Dusty said he's seen defensive improvement from his third baseman, but he recommended that he'd go home after last season and, and take up ballet. Work on his uh, footwork. Yeah. Now, Dusty didn't know if he actually did it. I think he probably didn't, but it is something that would help you, an athlete. And Al, you're being serious. I'm being serious. What did you do in your off seasons? At that point in time, the money wasn't huge. Eventually, you had a nice contract. I believe you're still being uh, paid by Ted Turner. So prior to that. Oh, I could tell you about the mercenary school I had down in the Bahamas, but uh, yeah, I played a lot of winter ball. You know, when my first year in the big leagues, the minimum salary was 12,000. Came up from making $800 a month in the minor leagues. And you do that for five months. People would always say, oh, I was working on a new pitch, or I was trying to do this. We were there for money. Period, end of story. Period. That slow breaking ball that just don't think you can wait. And Scalzo swings through it. And I guess the majority of uh, your teammates were guys that, back when you played, 60s and 70s, you know, you're talking about having to, to hold the quote unquote real job in the off seasons. Yes, and, you know, and. But it was it was good. You know, I had learned a lot. Had so much fun playing in Mexico, playing in Venezuela, playing in the Dominican Republic. I love the Dominican. I was there four different times. At the end of my career was I went to Venezuela and things had really changed, but changed because I couldn't pitch anymore. But uh, you know, early in the career, playing winter ball was some of the fun funnest times I had. Here's Pete Cosma, one ball, one strike on the Cardinal shortstop tonight in the eighth spot in this lineup. There's Arroyo just changing speeds in and out. And the other thing that we haven't even talked about yet, he's done it a couple of times, but he drops down the arm angle too. Yes. He could do it. Cosma would be a kind of guy he might do it to. Right there. Right there. Second strikeout. Both have come in this inning for right-hander Bronson Arroyo as we turn to our Twitter poll tonight presented by AT&T. Who will have the most impact on the NL Central? Good question tonight. Loesch, Russell Martin, Edwin Jackson, the former Cardinal, signed in the offseason by Chicago. And Shin Su Chu, the leadoff man for the Reds. That's a very good question right there. And You know, Russell Martin was brought in the Pirates because they couldn't throw out any base dealers and felt he was a veteran to help them with uh, you know, the young pitching staff there. Chu is kind of the missing fills the missing ingredient for Cincinnati a leadoff hitter. And we you pointed out yesterday that he's been primarily a right fielder not a center fielder. In the air to center, and the fans come alive with that one. As they remember yesterday, both pitchers seem to be locked in.
He pay tribute and celebrate Stan the Man's life and legacy. You can too, as all fans will take home that mutual harmonica. Nice pregame ceremony coming up on Friday night. As you can look at Jamie Pogue, he is the bullpen catcher of the St. Louis Cardinals, and the Cardinals take to the field. He'll warm up Alan Craig or Carlos Beltran. Whoever's in right field takes in that throw from John Jay and back to the bullpen he goes wearing that familiar number 39 of Dave McKay's. Oh, and Al Roboski. So long ago I forget. Shin Su Chu, leadoff man for the Cincinnati Reds. He looks at a strike. Dusty Baker, I asked him about Chu and said obviously he's not that poor of a outfielder. He said, no. He said, you know how things snowball. You miss the first one and things kind of snowball on you, but he just raves about this young man. He's from Busan, South Korea, speaks in English and extremely hard work. So he gets here about noon every day and just constantly working. It was clear that they needed to address the top of their lineup. They've done that with Chu also with interleague play. Cincinnati would always face Cleveland. So yes. they got an up close look at what Chu brings to the table. Here's a one two. Saw an outstanding all around player. You know, as you said, he's a corner outfielder, primarily a right fielder, but they don't have a true center fielder. Dusty was saying if I move Jay Bruce there, it's going to affect his hitting. Swing and a miss. How about Lance Lynn? Boy, does he look good tonight. Not to take anything away from Lynn, but think about this. Is this going to be the Achilles heel of, of the Giants to the movement on that pitch? Garcia struck out 10 yesterday and established a, or tied his career high. Now you got Lynn who struck out seven and three and a third innings. Are they going to be a team that is prone for a lot of strikeouts? Do me the Reds, not Giants. Zach Cozart average at 107 and he's had one very good game offensively and that's where the home runs the two the first week and also the RBIs primarily have come from and a career high last Friday a 15 to nothing win for the Reds Cozart had two home runs five RBIs both career highs Frazier also had two home runs in that game pretty pretty good production for your left side of your infield. Talked a little bit about it earlier but Lance Lynn and I'm sure this is working with Derek Lolaquist. Little, little change in his delivery working on that first base side and he kind of blocks himself off a little bit so he doesn't fall straight to first first base you know, he goes right at the batter and then after he steps he'll kind of fall a little bit to first base where before he's cut himself off and just you know almost with the ball and it's still in his hand started sliding towards first base and then through the 2 2 pitch Fouled back. One of the guys I know that Al Roboski loves to talk about. One of your favorite teammates, if not the best teammate you've ever had, as you get a look at the Hyundai replay and how Lynn finishes his pitches tonight. But I think about Bob Gibson, Al, and you oh, see yeah. those videos and how he would always fall off to the first base side. People get a concern. They say, well, you aren't feeling your position. And that's great if you can field your position, but it's more importantly how you throw the ball to home plate. And Bob Gibson, I think, won nine gold gloves. And he was cat like reflexes. But 
Lance Lynn is still working on it, but most of the time he's driving right to the plate. There's a good example. Tough play here and pass Cosma. The speed of Cozart, that would have been a very tough play, and the short hop and the backhand to get it out of the glove and to first. So it's a base hit for Cozart and the first base runner of the night for either side. You're exactly right, Dan. That would have been a tough play either way, but the speed of Cozart. You know, made it almost where he was forced to try and just stab at the ball, come up with it, and throw on the run. It would have been very difficult. I asked Jose Okendo today about that play at where it could. Cosma, could he tag the runner? Is Jay Bruce going by? You know, and he elected to throw home. Oh, he may have him. Oh, they're going to say he's safe. Those are been around not that long, but long enough to know you don't stray too far with Yadier Molina. Hardly anybody runs on Molina anymore. Are they're aware of this taking that secondary lead and getting picked off? He does get back just ahead of the tag. Yadier's got like 46 pickoffs. And the next closest was about 20. In the dirt. Joey Votto at the plate. Now, Votto had those two knee surgeries and they felt like he was. Had recovered. So well that he decided to go to the World Baseball Classic to play for his. Nation Canada. But. You were pointing out, and, and I agree with you, that it looks like everything is kind of that every bottle's not at 100%, or he's just not the, the player that we know he is, one of the best in, in the game. Watching him run yesterday, he scored, I believe, from first base. Just didn't seem very comfortable or fluid in running towards the plate. You don't obviously see a swing like that either. And and just think he didn't move his legs. Also pointing maybe not down, you know, bending at the knees quite the same as, as he, when he's a uh, 100%. And that time he just was reaching with his feet firmly planted, just reaching with the bat. Two balls and one strike. But we know this guy is just a tremendous hitter. One of the best in baseball. He had 35 doubles before the first half was through last year, which was a record. And then he had the uh, the knee issues in the second half of the season. Even with all the time he missed last year, he was 14th in the MVP balloting and a finalist for the Gold Glove. That was his MVP year, but you see, he is an outstanding player. Nothing really on a baseball diamond you can't do well. Let's see if they want to start the runner, they do, and spoiled by Votto. Well, you have to have a contact hitter at the plate. Here's Votto had to extend and reaches out here and protect his runner. You got Yadier Molina down there. There's not many teams even want to try and run off Yadier. The 3 2 off and running again. Ground ball right side base hit. Maybe that's what Votto needed to get going. With that runner on the move from first, Descalso was headed towards second base, which is interesting because you do have a left handed bat up there. Not you're supposed to hold your position. And you see he moving right there and may not have gotten it. Yeah. It was not hit hard. 
and I doubt he would have been able to field that ball or if you could have stopped him several feet out in the outfield grass he probably wouldn't have had the same situation runners at first and third. Phillips greeted by booze and that only adds fuel to the fire for this guy. He loves it. He is he's a very interesting young man and there's no doubt he can play the game of baseball but he is also a PR genius. You listen to any of his you know game star of the game comment yes. yesterday he raved about St. Louis raved about opening day seeing Ozzy Smith his favorite player growing up and all, all the famers he liked the the Raptor Ford Raptor trucks he was he liked those Dusty did too by the way uh, he was complimentary of everything he just said all the right things and he just loves it when when he's on the road and being booed he was great in the uh, interview with Jim after the game you're right Outstand outstanding and says all the right things a young man doesn't drink one ball one strike one out two runners on and Phillips hits it out to deep left center field this is trouble and oh, what a catch holiday makes the catch in left center takes the hit away runner tags up and scores but what a play by Holiday! a sliding catch at left center field may have saved another run from coming in to score we know about his bat but how about the play on the run and sliding in left center since Matt Holiday has come to St. Louis he has gone from maybe a below average outfielder to a plus outfielder in left field but he ranged as far as we've ever seen him on that ball right there and made a beautiful sliding catch got the ball back in the runner at third base Cozart just stayed at the bag he was going to score either way so he did the right thing instead of going halfway down the line like Bottle did at first Cozart just stayed at the bag and when the then he could score easily when the catch was made he would have dropped it obviously he would have scored also But two outs and a runner at first for Jay Bruce struck out his first time up where holiday is positioned right now you can see it's about where he was for Brandon Phillips he had a long way to go and was sliding right in front of the number six that was placed up there yesterday so that was a heck of a catch and a long run for Matt holiday. Bruce has been a little tardy on some of these swings against Lance Lynn. Lance has had his fastball up around 94, but that was 90 miles an hour. And a good job with his curveball and changeup, off speed pitches. Here's a one two check swing he went strikeout that's number eight through four innings for Lance Land. Holiday is due up third when we come back tremendous catch it left.
One run lead in the home half of the fourth. Firestone, extra mile index, most wins since 2006. That says an awful lot for what he's done in that red uniform. 92 for Bronson Arroyo. And we know, Al, that uh, some of those teams that he pitched for, especially early in his Reds career, weren't very good. And now he's uh, the benefactor of some very good teams. He is, and, and yet nothing really changes. He will go near seven innings per start. He'll get over the 200 inning barrier. Gives his team a chance to win. And many times by that graphic, he wins himself. The Red starters have produced six quality starts in the Red seven games. Guys looking on from the bullpen in right field. And we're back to the top of the lineup for St. Louis and John Jay. Talk to some guys to tell you they are in with every single pitch out there in the bullpen paying attention managing along with Mike Matheny and thinking about the scenario that could unfold in the game as to when they would come in player they may face 2 one pitch Randy Choate or even Zipchinski to an extent play the Reds it's pretty easy you better know all about Votto and Bruce Shin Su Chu it's Trevor Rosenthal a 3-2 pitch Puts it in play, slowly hit. Frazier. Tough play. Oh, what a pick. Down at first by Votto. The stretch and the backhanded pick from the former gold glover, Joey Votto. Maybe Frazier did do a little ballet. Comes in here. He's a big kid. Big kid. Comes in here. Reaches down, picks it up, throws on the run, and a nice pick by Votto. A lot of times you want to bounce it there, you want to bounce it out in front, but it was on the grass, got a real true hopper bottle, and with his soft hands, he makes the tough play. We haven't talked about it, but Cincinnati also defensively, for the most part, a solid team, good catcher in Hannigan. You know about Phillips, his gold gloves, Votto a gold glove. Jay has a very strong arm in right field. Here's Matt Carpenter. Speed pitches, breaking balls when he's behind the count. That's something that Carpenter doesn't mind hitting with two strikes. The 2 2. Carpenter lifts a fly ball to Shinsu Chu at center field. Well, for more on Brandon Phillips, we're not talking about uh, going after Yadi Molina. We're talking about Brandon Phillips and playing to the media, the fans here at Bush Stadium, the crowd. Fan favorite for the Reds. Jim, what do you have on Brandon Phillips? Well, he's apparently a, a fan of the Cardinals, Dan. He said this on the postgame show. Quote, the Cardinals are a great team and a great organization. Opening day was gorgeous, especially the tribute to Stan the Man. 
I really respect the Cardinals. He says he understands why Cardinal fans boo him, but he says he loves it and he feeds off the booing. And in his last 11 games against the Cardinals, apparently he's feeding off it. He's hitting 383. Good stuff, Jim. We appreciate it. Also, nice work with John Moselock. He had an update on Jason Bob. We'll talk about that when we come back. One nothing Reds. hits tonight you're invited into Krispy Kreme tomorrow you receive a dozen of their original glazed donuts for only three dollars and ninety nine cents stop by one of the four St. Louis area Krispy Kremes for this sensational deal grounds crew Bill Finley back at work between innings and it's one to nothing as we move ahead to the fifth they've got an easy job today but tomorrow they better get their rest tonight Bill Finley and his crew. Lance Lynn is pitching a gem here, but he's allowed the only two hits in this game, and he's trailing one nothing. Cardinal bats are silent once again. Todd Frazier to lead it off. Reds personnel have even talked about eventually having Frazier play in the outfield. Drafted. As a, a shortstop, as you talked about, Al, he's a big kid, about 225 pounds. Yeah, he might get too big for the infield. But they like his power potential. Just two hits in the game tonight. Cozart and Votto, two singles. There's that breaking ball that buckled the knees. Of Todd Frazier. And he gets it the wave at it and a strikeout. That's already nine strikeouts for Lance Lynn through four and a third. And look at that. Just get a good hitter that just reaching like that has no chance to do anything. He makes contact. Most strikeouts in a game for Lance Lynn was last season against the White Sox. He struck out 12. Let's see if he can set a new strikeout record or equal his like Jaime Garcia did last night, yesterday. Balls and two strikes on Derek Robinson. Signed as a minor league free agent by the Cincinnati Reds. Ryan Ludwig 
injured, so Robinson a chance to come up and show what he can do. He's in the Cincinnati, excuse me, the Royals organization. Is there Willie Wilson award winner for again about four years of stealing bases, leading the league, or leading the Royals organization in steals. Your former teammate Willie Wilson. Yep, he can fly. Wilson signed out of high school and turned out a college scholarship to play basketball and they said that was his favorite sport but family needed some help so he signed a big contract with the Royals he said he was a heck of a basketball player and he was just a very good athlete but this guy tremendous athlete as he turned down a scholarship to play football and a cornerback he was headed to play at the uh, University of Florida. He was going to be a Gator. I mentioned yesterday the name of Billy Hamilton, who is one of the top prospects in all of baseball. And the Cincinnati Reds have moved him to center field. He was four for five yesterday at Louisville, the AAA affiliate. And they expect him to make his debut maybe this year. And certainly next year. Eric Davis had been working with Hamilton, and he's a young man that stole 155 bases last year in the minor leagues. A record. And Eric Davis is working with him, trying to teach him how to become a center fielder. And Eric had to do that early in his uh, minor league career, switch from shortstop to center. And a base hit into right field. Side on him, kind of in the middle of the plate, up a little bit, bites it off, and just over the glove of the leaping Descalzo. See Billy Hatcher there, and reminds me that Chris Byer, the bench coach, is in coaching third base. Here is Mark Berry, Dusty Baker's third base coach, is throat cancer and getting treatments this week. We all want to wish Mark a speedy recovery, and everyone. Talks that that is the prognosis that he will make a full recovery and we can look forward to seeing him later on this summer. Well, this could be a good test for both Robinson and Molina, as Al told you, for the five years of the past five years, level he has been at, he has led that league in steals. At 55 two years ago at double A, the year before that, 50. And then that single A Wilmington 62 and 69. So good speed at first base. And the hitter is Ryan Hannigan. So often we talk about base stealers steal off the pitcher. So if Lance Lynn will vary his moves, kind of keep him on edge, you give any chance to Molina, he'll make up the difference and throw him out. Runner was going and it's popped up to the right side to Scalso. He's there and calls off Craig and makes the catch. Play better angle for the second baseman than the first baseman, Alan Craig, but he was there and Lance Lynn did his job. He goes to first base. See Descalzo calling off Alan Craig. Turns around to find out where the base runner is. He had a good jump on Lynn there. And now you can hear them get back. Two outs and a runner at first, and Bronson Arroyo. A little bigger lead this time by Robinson, not running, and the pitch is swung on and missed. You would want to run into an out at second base and then have your pitcher come up the next inning and make it an easy inning for Lynn.
There's a check swing and a strikeout of Arroyo. Two more strikeouts in this inning. That is number 10 of the game. He'll get the start for the Reds. It's our What's On Tap brought to you by Budweiser. Jake Westbrook making his home debut of this 2013 season. Budweiser What's On Tap against St. Louis. You see that Bailey is 3-7. and seven. IERA in his career. It seemed like he really turned the corner, though, last year in his career. You're right. Always considered he would be a frontline starter and hasn't pitched like it. But now they're starting to see that uh, he's going to be pitching very effectively, just like Bronson Arroyo. Cardinal bats. Four hits yesterday, no hits today through four innings. Big Cardinal fans, Eric and Julie Hickert. Married uh, Thursday, uh, last week in Vegas, and they're watching the game tonight. So, congratulations to Eric and Julie Hickard. And good luck. Here's the 0 1 pitch. As Craig looks at a high strike, nothing in two. High strike right over the middle of the plate, but because he changes speed so well, sometimes he can throw that 89 mile an hour pitch right by. Him. This is where any major league pitcher obviously could be so tough when he has you at 0 2, but with a guy like Arroyo, you truly have no idea what's coming because he can locate pitches, speeds, arm angles. Well, he could throw, you know, a, a ten pitch at bat to somebody and never duplicate the pitch. And many times he'll change locations with it so to such a degree you're, you're not sure what you're going to get. I was trying to say he and ben, he'll invent a pitch out there on the mound in order to get somebody out right in the middle of the game. High leg kick. Unique delivery of Bronson Arroyo. In the count, they one ball, two strikes. That's where Hennigan wanted that pitch. Hopping in, trying to get him to chase it. The 2-2. Two -two. Craig with a fly ball out to right. Jay Bruce, few steps in, puts it away for the out. 
we always talk about how Arroyo can throw from different angles. I'm going to show you something from his first start against Milwaukee. Watch where his release point is. See where it is on that pitch. Same batter. And he delivers three different pitches, and they all come from a different arm angle. It's good stuff to see He's that. Got, and he, he can go lower than that, too. That's right. Well, the big news of today, Jason Mott's ligament does have damage. Surgery is on the table if rest does not help the injury heal. John Moselock telling uh, Jim Hayes back in the third. They hope to have Mott begin a throwing program by May 1st. If not, then surgery is on the table. And even considering if it does respond and he gets the okay to start throwing on May 1st, He's going to go to spring training again. Ground ball right side. Phillips to his left and he makes the play. Very smooth former gold glove winner. I fully understand how he feeds off the booze. Tomorrow, if the Cardinal fans really want to get into the head of Brandon Phillips, start a plot, give him a standing ovation. He won't know what to do with that. <laughs> or just be quiet. He wouldn't know what to do with that either. He wouldn't like it. Here's Molina. He wouldn't like the being quiet. Standing ovation would fool him a little bit. What, what, what's going on? I know our fans are passionate about Brandon Phillips and rightfully so with everything that took place a couple of years ago. We also have fans that, you know, just enjoy the passion of baseball in general. And yeah, back then he stoked a fire with a lot of us, but yeah. you have to respect the fact that he could play the game at a high level too. And Dan, I'm, I'm sure you will agree with this. If he was wearing the Cardinal uniform, You'd he would him. be one of the absolute favorite ball players. And in his way of thinking, you know, by being recognized as a visiting player, that's a compliment. He thrives off of that, but he is an excellent player. And if he were here in St. Louis, I'm, he would be as popular as, as Molina. That's quite a statement. Brandon Phillips has done stuff where he'll tweet out, uh, you know, what is it, BP dude, something like that? Something like that, yeah. As Yachty drives it into right, Bruce, a diving catch and takes the hit away. The Cardinals looking for that first base hit, and they almost got it. Nice play in right field by Jay Bruce. Takes the hit away from Yachty. 1 0 St. Louis trailing.
new season for the Cardinals and at McDonald's. Try the new premium McRap and visit cardinals.com slash McRap to get $6 tickets. McDonald's and the Cardinals fresh is in season. Interesting to note that if you're just joining us, Mike Matheny saying that uh, all hands on deck, that there is nobody off limits tonight. After the long ninth inning that we saw yesterday for Boggs and Sipchinski, it was a long eighth inning for Rosenthal. But he said those uh, those guys are available if needed. Two things. Every one of those guys want to get back out there as soon as possible. And Mike pointed out even with Mitchell Boggs, his 29 pitches, eight of those were tosses in two intentional walks. So usually you'll you think everybody's on on board They'll, during band practice toss a little bit and unless they come in and say specifically they have a problem can't get loose you know you always consider everybody all hands on deck off speed pitch lifted down the left field line slicing foul off the bat of Shin Su Chu. To me, it's worth repeating the story about Rosenthal. He was saying the other day that he does long toss just about every single day here at the ballpark. And for anybody that are young fans of the viewing audience, a great lesson to be learned. You long toss, and that's how most ball players will tell you, if not all, that's how you're going to get that arm strength better and better and better. And for a lot of parents and youngsters, Tell him once again, once again, what was his uh, positions he used to play? A catcher, shortstop, rarely pitched. Rarely pitched. That's getting to be more and more common. Think about Jason Mott was a catcher. He can get signed as a catcher. A couple years into his minor league career, they said, you can't hit, we're going to make you a pitcher. The point being, all the wear and tear at such a young age. And the strongest advice we can always give young kids is to play a lot of catch. And as you get loose, start lengthening it out and start what we call long toss. Up the middle and a base hit as Lynn almost had the play behind his back, and Chu is aboard. The third hit of this ball game. And pitch out away from him. You see his follow through carries him towards first base. And as I said, you know, it's nice if you can end up in a fielding position, but it's most importantly is how are you going to have the maximum effect pitching to the plate? And his follow through carries him a little bit off to first. Swing it away, Zach Cozart. One run game, you might think about a sacrifice in this spot with your number two hitter. The big bat's coming up. And just because he swung away on the first pitch, don't think that that's what he's going to do the all the way through. Knowing Dusty Baker as a player, you know he has the bunt in mind, but I don't think he likes to do it to it that often. And a throw over will help Mike. Matheny determine whether he's bunting or not. Kind of get a read, you look at the hitter and watch it. Does he give away going into a bunting stance? We're in the sixth, and here's an 0 1 pitch instead of another check on Chu. How about Lance Lynn here tonight? He struck out 10, and he's allowed just four base hits. Only one run thus far. So that's back to back starters having struck out 10 reds. I could see Dusty just the way he manages more inclined to put a hit and run on than the sacrifice. 0 1 pitch. That would have been a perfect pitch to do it too on the outside corner. Take it the other way. Instead now, Cozart in the hole. No balls and two strikes. He is grounded out to third, also singled and scored the lone run of our ball game tonight. Last year, playing for Cleveland, Chu had 21 steals.
0 2. Ground ball left side. Cosma backs up, gets the lead man on the first, not in time. And Scalzo really hung in there. That wasn't not a double play ball. Made it close, but it's too much in the hole. We love to see the velocity of these pitchers and this is a good contrast. Yeah, high speed pitches and Arroyo is topped out at 90, Lance Lynn at 96. By the way, if you're wondering about the other end, Arroyo's low is 67. Here's Votto. Saw the Cardinals do this in the game yesterday. Really try to bust Votto in. Backing him off the plate. Single back of the fourth. And was left stranded. He's one for two. He struck out also back of the first. Two balls and no strikes. You go into Votto, you have to make sure you get in. And now falling behind 2-0. Oh, that's when you try and go in. Pitcher doesn't want to go three and zero, so he has a tendency to leave it over the middle of the plate. And if it's down, he's in trouble. Swinging away yesterday on 3 0. Will he do so here? He has a green light. And a strike. Just always think that these hitters today have the green light. So you don't want to just lop a ball in there. You want to just throw the ball, don't guide it, throw it with your normal you know, routine. And that is ball four. First walk by Lynn and the eleventh walk this year that Votto has received. And you're asking for trouble with here's that guy again. Who's getting louder? He gets more pumped up. Eighth year in Cincinnati. Acquired from the Indians in exchange for cash. But he was a top prospect in the Indians organization, and for whatever reason, they just kind of said, okay, we've had enough of him, but he's been a model citizen. He's just been outstanding since coming to the Reds. And he was originally drafted. These guys. Not a lot of them remain, but originally drafted by the Montreal Expos. It's back in 1999. 1 0 pitch. And you may remember that Omar Benaya, before he got the job with the Mets, Major League Baseball put him in charge of the Expos, and he made one final run for Montreal. And gave up a lot of young talent to make that run. And one of those trades involved Phillips, along with Lee Stevens, Cliff Lee, Grady Sizemore, in exchange for one player, Bartolo Colon. Who's still pitching? Showed getting loose. That's the thing, you get the strikeouts, but also you get the high pitch count as he's nearing 100, 97. For Lance Lynn. He's also due third up, so this is going to be possibly and likely his last inning of work. Finish it strong. Ground ball to the right side, and Craig will get Phillips, but runners advance to second and third. Alan Craig just 
His mindset was, I'm going to come in here, I'm going to feel it, spin and turn, I'm going to get a 3-6-3 double play, and he dropped it, and he did the right thing and just slow things down, pick it up, and step on the back. is going to go out and talk to him and remind him first base is open with the left hand hitting Bruce and a right hand hitting Todd Frazier on deck. Both both of them have struck out two times each tonight. How would you play this? I go right after him and then if I fall behind you know, and you get into a, a hitter's count, 2 0, 3 0, 3 1. You know, then you've got to think about putting him on. But I'm really not going to want to throw him a strike. Lynn has been able to use that fastball and get it by Bruce. Will they catch up this time? He's going to make a pitch like that, try to see if he can you know, expand his, get excited, expand the zone, and get himself out. Salas will get up because he could have possibly the next man, and you really don't want to run Schultz in this situation. Schultz, a left-handed specialist, which really probably only would pitch to a Jay Bruce or Votto. Runners at second and third. Two outs, the 2 0 pitch. Ground ball right side. This should do it. Descalso makes the play. Lance Lynn gets out of the jam as the Red Strand 2. Cardinals need to get these bats going. 1 0. Impact on the NL Central. Loesch, Martin, Jackson, or Shinsen Chu, and it's a tie between Loesch and Chu. We've seen the impact that the red center fielder has already had. Milwaukee, by the way, will be in town this weekend. Loesch will not be part of the uh, the starting rotation that we will see. Uh, Gallardo, Estrada, and Peralta. There's no question, though, that Milwaukee definitely needed to add a starter, and they've done that with Kyle Loesch. And it's a look outside the, the bullpen. Live look as Edward Mejica is getting loose. And here is Descalso. 1 nothing Cincinnati. I'm not going to argue with our poll there, but I think uh, people are going to find Russell Martin would have a, a little bit of impact than 4%. 
Third baseman is in the 0 1 pitch, and Descalso hits it down the right field line. The Cardinals finally have a hit into the corner. It goes Descalso on his way to second, and he will stop there. I think he could have made it to third. Yes, he could have made it to third. I, I'm trust that, but you don't want to run into an out of third base when you're trailing one to nothing. Jay Bruce, the right fielder, he thought this was going to hit the side wall. And it just skimmed along it, so he had to run back towards the Cardinal bullpen. And that guaranteed that you had two and maybe three. Bruce does have a strong arm, and he got it to the cutoff man, and that's what Okendo must have saw and didn't want to take the chance of having somebody run in. Runner at second, Descalso, and now Pete Cosma. It's a big at bat right here. Not easy at times being the eighth place hitter. But Al, there is no doubt this is a point of emphasis for the Cardinals. Situational hitting. Hit to the right side. Phillips thought about going to third, and Cosma does his job. Ooh, that would have been close over at third as Phillips hesitated just a bit, and I'm, the Cardinals benefit. You see him smiling there. I'm not sure he had a good grip on it. But you're right. Pete does the right thing. He's trying to hit behind the runner to at least advance him. And he, Phillips, Gold Glover, multiple Gold Glover. He sits there. Scalzo sees it sit that side, so he's scrambling over there. And Phillips really didn't have a good handle on it. You can see him kind of saying, "Man, I wish if I could have got that ball cleanly, I could have thrown him out there." And it's just one of those games inside the games. Couldn't, didn't have the handle on it. So he has to concede there, one out. They got the runner at first base, and big Matt Adams. Now, a great start. Is this a situation where the Reds talk about a couple of things here? Number one, a quick scouting report on Matt Adams because they're not very familiar with him. But also, are they saying, hey, if you don't feel comfortable in pitching to Adams, this guy's been red hot. Pitch around him and let's deal with Jay and maybe a potential double play. Exactly. See, is that second base umpire in the way? I don't think so. I think I think he's he's in front of the play enough, but he does duck down just in case. So let's reward Lance Lynn. Get him off the hook and hopefully get him a lead right here. And he's Matt Adams, at least when he starts, has been terrific. At 17 RBIs this spring, which is third best in the National League, and three hits in his two starts during the road trip. But this is where he has been asked to be a better player, the major leagues, a bench player. The infield is in. People probably don't understand, but it's tough for these players that have played every day. You know, they're minor leagues, they're star players that play every day. And then to learn to come off the bench and contribute, it's tough. And a lot of it is the mindset. But I think the Cardinals have the benefit of John Mabry, who made a living, you know, being that type of player. He can help them out. This is crushed. Deep right. Bruce back at the wall. Cardinals have the lead. Matt Adams off the bench. 2-1, St. Louis. Saw Lance Lynn, the first one to say thank you. That was a no doubter, was it? Oh yeah. They want the curtain call, their first of the year. Oh, that one was way off. Kind of loses the momentum now, but as you know, you kind of don't want to say go out there until your veteran teammates say go out there. So one out, Cardinals have the lead, 2-1. They finally have gotten to Arroyo. Started with a double by Descalso. Pinch hit, home run off the bench for Adams. 
That is why Matt Adams is here. 403 feet. As Jay fights it off down the left field line. It is slicing and just foul. One of the problems you had last season on the Cardinal bench was once you got by Carpenter, you didn't have any threat. There was nobody that the opposing team would fear. Matt Adams supplies it from the left side. Hopefully Ty Wigginton will do it from the right side. Swinging such a hot bat from spring even into the first week or so. It's one of those things where Mike Matheny then says, okay, you're getting our attention now. Let's get creative with this lineup to get him some more opportunities. Going into spring training, I think we both agree there was it was not on our radar. Liner, base hit, left field. Jay will take a wide turn around first. He'll stop there. I've got to be honest with you, Al, to steal a line from our great friend Jim Hayes. I've got to be honest. Matt Adams was on the caravan with me, and I saw his body, you know, as far as just the lost weight and talking with him, his mindset of, hey, I'm going in with the idea that I understand Alan Craig's your first baseman. The outfield positions are, are taken, so where's he going to play? So I've got to learn how to be a pinch hitter and that's really what my goal is is to make the club some way somehow understand I'm not going to be an everyday player and do it and good for him sure enough he's done it well, I remember to last year not this year but the spring of 12 that he was the talk of camp you know you come off a Texas League player of the year you know, just phenomenal power and everything and so everybody knew he had this potential but the fact that he could only play one position oh first base and did he get the, the ball or the bat get hand against hand runner moving and he's running out there and he got hit by the ball under gets of it and gets the bare hand the throwing hand. I don't know about you. I, I'm just amazed that catchers don't get hurt more often for as many innings as many plays behind the plate. Guys throwing 95 miles an hour. It's just amazing to me. There is a an old old catcher. George Susi. And he was like in the big leagues for I want to say Baltimore or something like this. You know, he played but he was in you know, and then he was like in, in the big leagues as a catcher for so many more years. I saw his hands one time, and it looked like bear claws, but it looked like every knuckle was broken. <laughs> every digit on his hands were broken, and I mean, it was the most gnarly thing you'd ever seen. And you go, oh, you're a catcher, yeah, huh? It, it <laughs> looks like you caught, huh? <laughs> they are tough. Matt Adams has sent a jolt through the stadium. The crowd is back in it. One out runner at first and the 0-1 pitch instead a check on Jay the runner at first base. Well after seeing that. You might Matheny do you want to run here and test Hannigan was his throwing hand. We got a good contact man at the plate. You surprised no activity in the Reds bullpen. Royals only had 74 pitches. Mahika will be the uh, next pitcher for St. Louis, looking ahead to the seventh inning. Not running, and the pitch is taken for a ball. Well, looking at the five starters, the five previous starts, Westbrook six and two thirds, no earned runs on Friday. Shelby Miller, five and a third, two earned runs Saturday. Wainwright, the seven innings, big lead that he got. I guess the bullpen phone may not be working because it looks like the pitching coach came out on the field and tried to get to get the attention of the bullpen, the Reds bullpen. This happened the other day in a major league game. I thought they could start using 
the cell phones. Well, or, or, at least, or, or at least it's something, you know, like a, a walkie-talkie or something right, that right. you have a direct yep. link just to the bullpen. And that must be the case. So the crew chief came over there, but whether phones are working or not working, you have to go to the old-fashioned hand signs. One ball, one strike, one out, runner at first. Anytime I see what just took place, hard not to think about World Series of 2011. Phone gate. That's a story in itself. It is. A lot of variations of that story floating now as we get further and further away. <laughs> but the bottom line is they won the World Series, so we don't worry about it. Things happen. Trying to need a battle. Get excited. <laughs> Here's a 1 1. Get the feeling that Arroyo could pitch nine innings this ball game and come back tomorrow and give you five. I mean, he's just one of those guys that. The rubber arm, you know, that that applies to him. I know in his mind he would he would tell you he could do that. One two pitch. Carpenter base hit into right. Jay to second on his way to third. Bruce fires it to third. Offline. Carpenter into second. They missed the cut. And in doing so, Matt Carpenter hustling into second base. If you're an outfielder, you have to anticipate. Let's watch the bench reaction, especially when he's best in this and see Wainwright saying go to second. That's the kind of bench you want to see right there, the cheering, cheerleading. And right now there's stall tactics letting Sam LeCure get ready. If you're an outfielder in that situation, Bruce looked like he wasn't quite thinking that they would run on him. So there was a slight hesitation there, and then he rushed the throw and you're offline. Well, we have a chance. The Cardinals, Fox Sports, and the state of Missouri are teaming up to help you stop smoking. For more information, call the quit line at 1 800 quit now. Along with Jim Hayes, Al Roboski, I'm Dan McLaughlin, our entire Fox Sports Midwest crew. We are in St. Louis at Bush Stadium. And Dusty Baker looks like he'll make the move to his bullpen. Prior to this inning, Arroyo. Had not allowed a base hit. It was perfect. Perfect through five. Dusty is leaving him in. I thought for sure he'd be walking out there and making a pitching change. LeCure was the winner in yesterday's game. Now I think LeCure was just like you and me. He started walking towards the gate to come in. I thought he was coming in too. Put my head down and started figuring out the, the line score. And, and maybe just talking a little strategy. And I believe in this. If this is what might happen, they may have Bronson Arroyo walk holiday here to load the bases and then make a pitching change. Why penalize the reliever coming in? You're asking him to do something positive. And, and then if you ask him to walk the guy, the first thing he has to do is, is negative. Put 
the ultimate trust in your veteran Arroyo here and game might be on the line right now with the bases loaded and a power hitter a producer with runners in scoring position Alan Craig who hit 400 last year in this spot 406 combined the last two years Craig tonight is flight out to left and also flight out to right bases loaded chance to bust it wide open Craig, one of those guys that just really looks forward to hitting with guys in scoring position. Not everybody does. Pressure's on the pitcher, not the hitter. Here's a 1 0 pitch. Brown ball to the right side. Phillips will go to first and get the out. Run scores. That's John Jay. And it's 3 to 1. The RBI for Craig, his fifth of the year. You can see the way he swung the bat there. That's one of the things that Mike Matheny has been trying to preach in spring training. Even though I want my big my big guys sometimes to give themselves up. Hit the ball to the right side, get that runner in. Even though you make it out, we still pick up a valuable run. And left hand hitters this inning have been troublesome for Arroyo and I was just about to say do you want to bring in a lefty they haven't had one up to turn Beltron around I agree with you Al the lefties have had some damage here so two outs and two on Beltron into center field that will drop for a base hit one run is in here comes another the throw to the plate is in time they get holiday I'll tell you what Matt Carpenter was not off at third base with contact. And Holiday, I'm not sure if he hesitated going around third. Regardless, the throw by Chu gets him. We'll take a closer look when we come back. The Cardinals, though, get to Arroyo and the Reds for the first time tonight. St. Louis on top, 4-1. And now they lead it four to one. Here's what we're talking about as we went to break. It was uh, two outs, second and third. Holiday, the runner at second, and Carpenter goes back to tag up. No need to do that, obviously, with two outs. And Holiday was right on his heels and then tagged out. I don't think he hesitated whatsoever. It didn't no. cause him to be out at the plate. No, it did. It did not. It was just a strong throw from Chu coming in, and you know you force the the defense to execute, and this time the Reds did. Strong throw. And you saw Kendo was waving home. He was waving home really holiday at the point of contact because, as you said, with two outs there and and uh, Carpenter kind of you know froze, but it wasn't going to make any difference. He was going to come in and score anyway, and he did. 
So now Lynn gives way to Mahika. Our Chevy called to the pin. Mike Matheny again addressing the media today, saying, look, I'm not going to make a knee-jerk reaction over one game. Yesterday was obviously not what we're looking for from our bullpen. Mitchell Boggs said it was one of the worst, if not the worst, pitch game that he had been uh, in is uh, what he contributed to that ninth inning. So Mike saying, look, I've got a lot of faith in my bullpen, and here's Edward Mejica. A lot of compliments to Mitchell Boggs, the way he took it like a man, stayed there and faced the, you know, the media and answered the questions, you know, which is not easy to do when you have a game like that. But it is part of your responsibility, and he did it the right way, and I know everybody in the media appreciates that. And, and so then, do we. Then you just say, hey, uh, you know, hopefully you'll have better success next time. In in the air, left center, Todd Frazier. Out number one here in the seven. You now the Cardinals hit just one pinch hit home run in 279 plate appearances last year. And for the Cardinals, Molina's seventh inning home run in game three at Arizona. That was the last time that we saw a home run hit by the Cardinals. So young Matt Adams delivers with a big blow off the bench. something that you have to be acutely aware of if you're Mike Matheny is how you handle your bullpen and not just the games that they come in and pitch. Remember Edward Mejica out was up and throwing and he was hot. He was ready to come in yesterday and when I say hot not meaning that he was upset but he was warmed up and that's something that the Cardinals do chart how many pitches they throw warming up obviously how many pitches in a game but the course of a season you have to be very careful with that how a guy is used the managers and pitching coaches treat the guys a bullpen a lot better where as you said they monitor those throws I always found the toughest thing was me is if I warmed up a couple innings and did not get in the game if you get in the game you kind of blow everything out and you feel you feel good but it's the innings you leave down there in the bullpen that take a toll on. Mills Lee, it's, I think it's his birthday today. Lane Blaze is uh, 49, I believe, and I think tomorrow is his uh, coachman's birthday. Blaze is the new bullpen coach. He's held on to strikeout. Take a look at our Nissan drive of the game. Who else? Matt Adams. Also important that he hit a curveball there. You know he can hit fastballs, then hit a curveball. It was the perfect time, and he's off to a great start. Went seven for eleven now. It's popped foul out of play. Ryan Hannigan. been a lot of talk of and I think it's interesting to note as Hanahan is on deck about the DH being introduced to the National League at some point and we're hearing the year of 2016 I hate it but it's inevitable it seems to be that way I'm with you I love the, the strategy of the pitcher as part of the game and hitting you almost have to declare it Good work by Mahika in this familiar spot of the seventh inning. Gets the strikeout. Time to stretch here at Bush Stadium. It's 4 1. Birds on top.
birthday. The team will wear the new alternate St. Louis jersey for the first time, and 25,000 fans, 21 and older, get their very own full button-down replica, compliments of Lumiere Place. Tickets are available for this Saturday, cardinals.com slash promotions. The usual harmonica will be on Friday. Jersey on Saturday. Yachty giveaway on Sunday. Barnes Jewish Hospital difference maker tonight. How about Edward Mejica? An inning, two strikeouts. It's so solid as we saw last year in the seventh, and that's where the Cardinals like him again this year. Mejica would have, could have been an option for the eighth inning yesterday, but they like him in the seventh. This is Manny Parra. He made his Reds debut with two successful innings. Our Chevy called the bullpen. And that 15 nothing affair for the Reds victory last Friday and Chris Heisey part of the double switch he goes into play left field he'll be the first hitter in the Reds eighth inning welcome to the ball game base hit into right and Molina singles to start the home half of the seventh Cardinals a while to get going. They had no hits, no base runners in the first five innings, and now they have six hits and the one plus inning. So let's see if we can add to this lead. Rosenthal is warming up. Has a nice little cushion now, but it, no harm in adding to it. Here is Descalso. He got it all started for St. Louis. A double into the right field corner off of Bronson Arroyo. We thought he probably could have stretched it to a triple, but down by a run at that point. The first hit getting later in the game. It worked out all right. You bet it did. Matt Adams would bring him in with the pinch hit homer. Mike Matheny did use Rosenthal on back to back games in Arizona. I liken Rosenthal right now to the backup quarterback of any team. As that is hit out to shallow left and the catch is made. You know, we hear all the time, and, and people fall in love with the velocity. And you understand why. It's fun to watch. He's hitting triple digits. You say, well, maybe this is the guy that should be the closer. But let's not forget, he's also had a chance at two holds, and that hasn't worked out for him. So let him ease into it, I think, is what the Cardinals would like to do. Exactly right. I mean, it's his time will come. And there will be times even this season where Mike Matheny will call on Rosenthal to close out a game. But that's even if uh, Mott was here. You know, because there would be times when Mott, you know, would have pitched three days in a row and you didn't have really, you know, another option. So things will fall in place. Line drive, base hit, right field. To the wall it goes, off the bat of Cosma. And Yachty trotting into third. Should have known it was Cosma. It's we're in the seventh inning. That's when right. he does his best hitting. So Yachty comes over here, looks to see one out. High pitch. He can turn on that ball that's up. So runners at second and third. And here is Ty Wigington. You know, we talked about it a lot in spring. This is primarily, I think, the role that John Mozalog envisioned for Wigington, not just coming off the bench, but facing left-handed pitching, where he's had pretty good success. And, you know, coming in here and sh scaring the other team, having a power bat, put a little fear in them. Matt Adams does it from the left side. Hopefully Ty can do it from the right.
Cosmo will celebrate his 25th birthday on Thursday. Forget how young he was when he signed his right out of high school. It seems like he's been around forever. One ball, one strike on Ty Wigginton. Runners at second and third. Yachty way down the line and now back to the bag at third. Sometimes you can get a pitcher to balk, especially a left hander who he can't see that runner. You know, he hears everybody like pay attention, step off, do something, and sometimes you don't step off, you'll just you flinch and make an effort going to the plate and then step off and it's a balk. Off speed pitch, two strikes on Wigington. In the dirt, locked nicely, kept in front, two and two. Welcome those watching St. Louis Blues hockey. Another big, big win for the Blues, one to nothing. Congratulations to them. The Cardinals lead it four to one. They picked up four runs off of Bronson Arroyo just an inning ago. Matt Adams with a two run pinch hit home run to get the Cardinals on the board. They added two more and they lead it four to one. Lance Lynn, the starter tonight with 10 strikeouts. St. Louis trying to add to the lead right here. Me Garcia, Lynn, and Mojica struck out 22 Reds in the first two games of this series. Bar is finally set and a 2 2 pitch. Wigginton is swing and a miss. So two down and it's up to Jay. Off speed pitch there. Wigginton had a couple hits in his. Start on Sunday in San Francisco. Two big runs out there, insurance runs. First pitch to Jay. Taken up and in. John Jay tonight. Grounded out to third twice the second time he was robbed and singled and scored last inning. Here's the 1 0 pitch. Jay with a fly ball to left. And the catch is made. Cardinals strand two. They miss a very good opportunity to add to their lead. Here he comes, the hard throwing right hander, Trevor Rosenthal. Chevy call to the pen. Trevor coming in.
Radio, Bomberito Sports Update. Busy night for Pat Paris. Hello, Pat. Hey, Dan. Thanks very much. Mets at the Phillies tonight. Bottom three, St. Louis and Ryan Howard's at plate, and he leads things off with his first home run of the season. Comes off Dylan G. And then the next batter is Michael Young, another blast. Then two batters later, it's John Mayberry. Three homers off G in the inning. Phillies go on to win 8-3. to three. Dan, Al, back up to you in the booth. Okay, Pat, thanks. And here is Trevor Rosenthal. Pitched in the eighth inning yesterday. Cardinals at that point led 4-3. Reds tied it up and eventually won the game. Chris Heisey. First pitch, looks at a strike, and we're underway here in the top of the eighth. Very young career for Rosenthal, but this is going to be just the fourth time he's pitched in back-to-back -back game. And remember, down in the minor leagues, was used as a starter. Something that he'll tell you he prefers, however, he also prefers pitching in front of 40,000 people. And... I think he likes the first and 15th better at the major league level than the minor leagues. Can't blame him there either. No, he can't. Cardinals have all these different power arms that can come at you from Rosenthal to Boggs. Mott went healthy. And Mike Matheny has said, okay, our bullpen guys are ready to bounce back. As you get a look at Mott. We heard about the news on him. More on that in the postgame show. But uh, will Mitchell Boggs be your closer if the Cardinals get there with a the lead? There's a strikeout to start the eighth. I would assume, Al, that, and you know this better than anybody, having done this before, and you had great success. But if you didn't have success, man, you want to get out there right away. And I'm sure Mike Matheny would love to do that for Boggs as well. You do, and and you want to come out in the right situation. You want to be in a what hopefully will be a safe situation. It is right now. It wouldn't hurt if the Cardinals added on more runs. You know, Rosenthal has something to prove to himself. He doesn't have to prove it to us. We know he's going to be a weapon out of that bullpen, but. Until he has, you know, come in in a situation with a lead like this and secure it, move it to the ninth inning, you know, there's still doubts there too. So this is something important for his psyche. Shin Su Chu. When you have a guy like this in Rosenthal, Allen, he said that when he was a starter, really didn't feel right until. The fifth inning, and that's when his velocity would get to the 100, 101. And yet, as a reliever, you would think, well, you're not throwing as much, and you know, you're coming out there pumping and, and letting it go, not saving anything, that that's when you would hit 100. I, I just find that kind of ironic that he would say that in the fifth, he would feel a little bit stronger than he would. And maybe you can explain that as to why that would be the case. I'm sure I can. Yeah. Fights it off, shallow left, and drops in for a base hit in front of Holiday. So Chu is aboard. Two for four with two singles. High on base percentage for Chu, and here he is again, giving them the chance. About it, Dan. When you talk about the fifth inning, you start getting loose. Well, the minor leagues with the pitch limits, you know, he rarely got a chance to ever pitch, probably in the sixth inning. This could be two, and that'll help. A flip and a throw. How about a double play? Six, four, three on the double play.
and the St. Louis Cardinals have a 4-1 lead in the home half of the eighth. Arroyo, very good start for the Reds. He just had a little bump at the back end of the uh, start for him in that sixth inning. That's when he gave up the five hits and the four runs. Prior to that, he was perfect. Lance Lynn strikes out ten in his six innings, and Matt Adams off the bench. Got the scoring started for St. Louis with a two-run shot. AT&T, U-verse recap. Mark and Renee Pate celebrating a 30th anniversary, a happy anniversary, and hopefully a Cardinals win. As Carpenter digs in, flight out to left, also popped out to short, and a single and a run scored last time up. Andy Parra's second inning to work, he escaped the. Good Cardinal scoring opportunity. No one warming up behind him, so it appears he will have this bottom of the eighth inning. Waits on the pitch and lights it for a base hit out to left. We have a moment. We remind you, Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest, brought to you by Budweiser, the official beer of Major League Baseball. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds, and by your quality four dealers. Beautiful night here in St. Louis. The look from the bullpen. Abraboski, Dan McLaughlin, Jim Hayes with you. A short lead at first by Carpenter. Holiday intentionally walked last time up. That would load him up for Craig, who is on deck. He grounded out to drive in a run, and then Beltron. A two out base hit into center to make it four to one. Been in. Guy like Manny Parra, former starter, not only a lefty lefty matchup type of guy, but Dusty Baker has said that he'll use him for extended innings. Not afraid to stretch him out. A little bigger lead this time at first base, and Carpenter may be going. He's now heading back to the bag at first. Sometimes you take a bigger lead, but it's a one way lead. Your full intention is to come back to the bag, but you're trying to induce a throw or pitchers spend more time worrying about the runner at first than the hitter at the plate. A 2 0 pitch, and that's taken for a strike. Holiday didn't like the call. The pitch of Boggs throwing in the Cardinals' bullpen. By the way, the Reds will have Votto, Phillips, Bruce due up, looking ahead to their half of the night. And now during the break, you brought up a very good point. You've got Rosenthal on back-to-back -back nights. If you wanted to extend him one more inning, you probably could. Turned out to be a quick eighth, and then you say Boggs, and he'd be available for tomorrow. Yeah, part of the thinking is that you have a day game tomorrow, but there's a shot. 
into the corner and right field. Fair ball. To the wall it goes. Carpenter on his way to third and held up late. It'll be a double for Holiday. Runners at second and third. Nobody out. Also in a situation too, Dan, you know, we're thinking about as you see how they lift that leg up. His average is not where we know it'll be. It's about at least 100 points shy, but he's doing the production. He's got a home run. He's got five RBIs. And if there were more than or an out or two here, Carpenter would have been sent. But with nobody out, you got two runners out there in scoring position. And hopefully you can pile on. At the defensive alignment on the right side here. How far up the line Votto is. So it's another opportunity for Craig. Floats in there for a strike. Do you find it uh, interesting that you did not see a righty throwing in the pin right now for Dusty Baker? And you, specifically for this situation. You know, you touched on it that uh, par, you know, being a starter. A lot of left handed starters actually have better success against right handed batters because of their breaking pitches. And the dirt gets away. Here comes Carpenter sliding in for the run. And it's 5 to 1 Cardinals. An aggressive play by Carpenter, and it pays off. As many runs as possible, but watch the wild pitch out so far out in front of the plate. It's really tough for a catcher to anticipate any kind of a bounce. A follow up question to Boggs even if it becomes a situation where it's not even a save, do you bring him in just to let him get back out there? And you probably won't even be able to use him tomorrow now that he's warming up. Well, see, that's that's you know, we got all these scenarios that are all working against. Tomorrow and the future because as you said if if it's a now it's a non safe situation. That's a foul if you didn't have the issue of trying to get Boggs straightened out you would set him down and bring in somebody else because it's non safe but you probably will go ahead and bring him in anyway because you're trying to say okay at least we he knows we have confidence in him he's going to be our closer. And just because of the scenario, we it's a non-safe situation. You know, you you have that less pressurous outing that he can have. That you know, you say, okay, this would be good for him too to relax a little bit. Ground ball, backhanded by Frazier, long throw across the diamond, and he makes the play. Got in just enough on Alec Craig. I think a lot has to do with the fact too, Dan, that you know there's a strong possibility with the forecast that you may not get to the late inning of the bullpen. But you, know, you have to assume you're going to play. But I mean, right now I want to see Mitchell Boggs as a closer. You're thinking is though, until I'm back into a closing situation and given that opportunity. You know, it's it's good warm up, it's good practice, but it doesn't really mean anything. Beltron on the first pitch pops it up. They'll give it a look, and it's out of play. And you would have to think the last 24 hours it's just eaten away at Mitchell Boggs says Beltron's been very good at this spot this year with the six RBIs. It's three for six, a home run off of. Manny Parra. It's also magnified, Al. You had the biggest crowd in the history of this stadium yesterday. It's opening day. I mean, all those factors that come into this. Oh, one one pitch. One ball, one strike. Beltron with an RBI single. That was in the sixth inning. He's also grounded out twice to second.
the 2 1 inside and low. Fans ready to erupt again. Little chopper that's pulled foul. Hard. I agree. Just noticed that on the uh, previous pitch. He's had some health issues over the years when he was with Milwaukee, but maybe the fact of coming out of the bullpen, knowing he's not going to go five plus innings, he's letting it fly. The 3 2 again. Just got a piece as he took something off that pitch at 82. Yep. 94 to 82. Beltran is close, but just a hair off. So streaky as we saw in his first year, and really that's been the book on Carlos. And when he's hot, better watch out. I think a lot of it has to do with when he's 100% healthy. The, you know, the hairline fracture of the toes, one thing, but those knees are bulky at times. 3 2 is hit a mile high. Foul territory. And Frazier makes the catch. Good point, Al, because you think about who may play in that day game tomorrow, and after what we saw from Adams, maybe Craig goes to right tomorrow and get Matt Adams some ABs tomorrow afternoon. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the St. Louis Cardinals. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. Now he's been swinging the bat a lot better than that average indicates and a little bit of luck he'd have a lot more RBIs too. Strike and Yachty didn't like it. Jose Okendo thought that that first ball that he hit the center yesterday that drove in two runs should have been scored a hit if you factored in the tough sun. Fly ball into right center. The Cardinals add to their lead as Carpenter would score, and here comes Mitchell Boggs returning to the mound. 5 1 as we head to the night.
Up after the game on the post game edition of Missouri Lottery Cardinals Live, Pat Harris and Ricky Horton standing by. Matt Adams with some pinch hit thunder. They'll recap. They'll take a look at Lance Lynn's night. Plus, we'll have Mike Matheny's post game news conference. Mitchell Boggs will take over for the Cardinals as we head back to the booth. And Dan and Al, guys. Chevy called to the pen. So Mitchell Boggs right back out there. Mike Matheny said this was the scenario he would like to see. At least where you'd see Boggs pitching. He'd like to see a safe situation, however, to make it perfect. And then he rolls away and has an uneventful ninth. But uh, just good to get him back out there. It really is. And it sends a message. And first of all, let's just say that Boggs had a phenomenal year last year. Because Mike Matheny really worked on his psyche. You know, from day one of last spring year's spring training he said you're going to be an integral part of my bullpen you're going to be a big part of it he led the national league and and holds did an outstanding job played on was selected the only player from the Cardinals selected on the, the American team world baseball classic and let's just see how he responds he he was a real professional answering all the the questions from the media yesterday and Let's hope he has a lot easier time tonight. Here's the 0 1 pitch. Right at him for strike two. Joey Votto at the plate. So even though you're in a, a situation where you have a lead of 5 to 1, you still, though, have to face minimum three great hitters in Votto, Phillips, and Bruce. The 0 2. You know, he's still closed off a little bit. I mean, it's still quite a bit. And he pitched that way last year, but it's a little bit more of an extreme. And what we're talking about is when the right handed batter comes up, we'll see if he can't pitch to his glove hand. What, what happens is you can see it right now. What I'm saying, he has trouble getting in on a left-handed batter or a way to a right-handed batter because he's so closed off. And if you can't pitch to both sides of the plate, it's pretty, you're being a lot easier for the hitter. Outside, and it's that pitch right yeah. there. I, I love deception, and in his mind, it makes him more deceptive because you know, he's back. You know, and, uh, a batter can read the number and his name off his back, but it takes a lot to get in on or away to a batter. Ground ball. A couple of hops to second. First out. We turn to our player of the game presented by Budweiser, Lance Lynn, the starter, with the 10 strikeouts in six innings, four hits in a run. And he's in line for a potential win tonight. That's uh, last five games, all the starters have pitched very well. One time through the rotation, they pitched well. Hopefully that will continue. Now let's see if he can get outside to a right hand batter. He there didn't it was. do that yesterday. And remember, you know, he's hit two right-handed batters. He had the wild pitch that would have hit a third right-hand batter. And remember, in a bunt play, if the batter didn't get the bat on the ball, it would have hit him in the, in the midsection too. So maybe opening up just a little bit allows him to get outside. Oh, and two on Brandon Phillips. He's grounded out. And a sack fly RBI back in the fourth and a great play by a holiday and left. And also a ground out. That play by a holiday good. Downward action and bottom dropped out of the pitch from Boggs. But you think back to a key play you never know maybe that runner from first scores as well if holiday doesn't come up with that catch and left. Good point. Got him. Strike out of Phillips and the crowd loves it. was so complimentary of Mitchell Boggs yesterday. Remember, he got a big hit that hit right on the foul line down the right field line, but maybe he psyched himself out. As he talked about Mitchell, one of the toughest pitchers in the league. He's got really good stuff. 
And you can just tell Boggs is just feeling so much better about himself than he, less than 24 hours ago. Little jolt of confidence. Ooh, never hurts. So two outs, and here's Jay Bruce. The fans on their feet. Strike one. Crowd tonight of 37,731. Strike. Bruce with a couple of the strikeouts. Also grounded out. And he's over three. One for eight against Mitchell Boggs. Reminder on the air tomorrow at noon. Westbrook and Bailey. Ground ball. Fair ball. This should do it. And the Cardinals take game number two. Well pitched. Timely offense. A 5-1 win. Took the offense a little time to get going, but boy, when they started delivering, they got nine hits quickly, five runs. Good all-around game. Great pinch hitting appearance by Adams. Outstanding pitching all the way through. Good to see Mitchell Boggs bounce back. The Cardinals bounce back thanks to Mac Adams. His two-run pinch hit homer. Cardinals slide into a win. Five to one. Post game show next.